Hi, I'm attorney Tammy Saltzman, and you are watching Divorce Connection Network. Today, we are going to be interviewing Matthew Lundy, a new dad to twin girls who are so adorable, I must add that in. But more importantly, he is an attorney practicing seven years in Florida. He's licensed in four states. He's a Gator from the University of Florida. And most importantly, he prepares something called a quadro. And that is the short version for Q-D-R-O, quadro. So quadro is, stands for a qualified domestic relation order. And you will hear that term in the area of family law when there's a pension or a 401k or some type of employee benefit that needs to be divided between the spouses during the marital time. So Matt, welcome. Thank you. Did I explain that well? I think that was a pretty good explanation. Good, good. So our audience is contemplating divorce okay. and they know nothing about what a quadro is, when they would need one, and where would they go to get one. Okay. So the first question that I always get is, what is a quadro and why do I need one? Okay? And like Tammy said, a quadro is a qualified domestic relations order, which doesn't tell you very much. A quadro is essentially a court order that enforces um, the agreement between the parties or the order of the court that tells the parties how they're going to split their retirement plan. So let's say that Tammy and I are splitting up and she's getting my entire 401k. So as between the two of us, we sign an agreement that says Tammy's going to get 100% of Matthew's 401k. Well, that's great. Now we've got an agreement between the two of us, but how do we enforce it? How do we get the retirement plan that's actually holding the money to distribute that money to Tammy? Well, what we do is we get a qualified domestic relations order done. A qualified domestic relations order is an order that's entered in a state court, in a family law court, but it's entered um, and it's created to satisfy federal law. So it's going to have some, um, some weird language in there that's going to satisfy federal legal requirements and some of the requirements of the retirement plan so that it clearly spells out exactly what is supposed to be transferred to Tammy. And this is important because these orders will change depending <clears throat> on the requirement of the company or the, for the administrator who's exactly. holding the funds. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. I know that there are companies out there that offer Quadra services, but why don't you tell us the importance of having a lawyer do a Quadra? Okay. Just like everything else in family law, um, there are non-attorneys out there who are trying to provide services related to Quadros. So um, there are non-attorney mediators, there are non-attorney... Um, like arbitrators, there are all sorts of non-attorney service providers. In the, the quadro context, there's a lot of non-attorneys who are trying to prepare these quadros. And just like everything else, and every other legally um, important document, it has to be either drafted or supervised by an attorney. So in order to get a quadro done, remember, we're talking about a court order. That order will ultimately need to satisfy federal legal requirements, state legal requirements. It'll have to be signed by a judge, and it'll have to be administered by the plan. So there's a lot of room for things to go wrong. And because of that, the Florida Bar says that if you're going to do a quadro, it has to either be prepared by an attorney or the preparation of it by a non-attorney has to be supervised by an attorney. So in order to get it done in the most cost-effective way possible as a divorce litigant, you always want to have an attorney do it because you're always going to save money on having an additional professional come in to do it. So some people might say to me, well, you're a lawyer. Why can't you prepare the quadro <clears throat> for me? So a doctor who does heart work isn't necessarily someone who's going to work on your ankle. And just like in, in law, a criminal lawyer may not know family, and family may not know criminal. Quadro work is very specified, and it's a great area to specialize in. And so in my practice, I only go to attorneys who prepare quadros for my clients. Do you offer a flat rate for your services, or do you bill by the hour? We order a flat. Uh, we we work on a flat rate for our services. So that's really important. So would you prefer, as a client, to pay a lawyer a flat fee that would be very equivalent to a service that's pre 
uh, providing you with the same exact flat fee, I would always pick the lawyer. So, <clears throat> Matt, when should a couple be contemplating the use of someone like you to prepare a quadro? What would alert them that they would even need one? The minute that they, one, know that they're going to proceed in divorce and that they're not going to try to work it out any further. And the moment that, two, they know that they have a retirement plan, that's the point at which somebody like me should be consulted. Um, typically with the attorneys that I work with in the states that I'm working in, we've worked together so much that they know that the moment that they see a retirement plan, a red flag goes up. So either they or one of their assistants or even their client will call me to say, this is the retirement plan that's being split. What do we need to do? And we start as early in the case as possible with trying to do that. It's important to distinguish between getting a quadro done, which is the court order that ultimately effectively makes the, the transfer from the retirement plan to the former spouse and actually splitting the retirement plan. Splitting the retirement plan is a process that starts long before the quadro is actually done because it's got to start at the point at which negotiations are going on. In a divorce, you're going to have you know a number of different types of property, a house, cars, bank accounts, several retirement plans sometimes. You, you name it and you can throw it in. And so whether or not you'll split that plan and how you'll split it will depend on all the other things that are going to be split. Okay. So a couple of things that we could address here would be, number one, the date of which the determination starts. So normally your assets are going to start joint assets begin on the date of marriage, so from the time that you are married to the time that you get divorced. All of those things are marital assets. The court will ask us to determine a cutoff date. Right, normally the cutoff date is the day that the petition is filed. However, couples sometimes split, they move out of the marital residence and they part ways maybe a year before they even consult a lawyer. So sometimes upon agreement, we'll use the date that the party separated. So what we give to Matt is the date the parties were married, everything before that is non-marital, and, and then the date that we're going to use to determine how to split the quadro. So Matt, an individual IRA, if a couple owns an individual IRA, mm -hmm. do they need a quadro for that? Generally speaking, you do not need a quadro to divide an IRA. There's a distinction between an IRA and a 401k. And this is actually a very interesting point that you raise because most people, when they're accruing a retirement plan, they generally know that they have a retirement plan. They generally don't know that much about it. So the process of dividing it is complicated by that because they won't know whether or not they'll need a quadro to divide it. And what's unique about IRAs is IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account. A 401k is generally set up by an employer for their employees. An IRA is set up by an individual for themselves. And there's some, some intermediate steps in between a 401k and an IRA, such as a SEP IRA, which is set up by a self-employed person for themselves. So it gets kind of complicated. But what's more is the IRAs themselves often do require additional orders to be prepared and a whole process for dividing these accounts that isn't really laid out in the law. So. I don't want to give you the blanket rule that an IRA doesn't need an additional order because Section 408 of the Internal Revenue Code, not to get too deeply into the Internal Revenue Code, but Please. The Section 408 <laughs> of the Internal Revenue Code says that you need to have a domestic relations order that lays out how the transfer of the IRA is going to be completed. Well, most people don't put very specific language into their settlement agreements about the IRA transfer, so the IRA custodian will require an additional order, which they sometimes call a quadro. Okay, so that's interesting. So the best way to know whether or not you need that is to contact the company that's holding exactly. your IRA and ask them, so AXA, so UBS, so Merrill Lynch, so what do I need? I'm getting divorced. When I got divorced, he took his, I took mine, we didn't split them, it worked out really well. We didn't need any qualified domestic relation orders because we just decided you take what you're entitled to and I'll take what I'm entitled to. That's already in my name. So it worked out really easy. Um, individuals hire you as well as attorneys like me, is that correct? correct. 
a lot of couples out there that are watching our show are using the self-help center and they are trying to get their own agreements done. So if you find that you're trying to do this without a lawyer, which is fine, you can contact Matt directly so that he can help you with these qualified domestic relation orders. And so, Matt, I want to thank you for coming on the I show today. And I also want to let all of you know that you can go onto our website at divorceconnectionnetwork.com. You will see Matt's information posted there, a link to his website. If you have any questions that you'd like answered during one of our shows, please email me at Tammy at divorceconnectionnetwork.com. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining us.